Smart glass, also known as PDLC film, privacy film, switch glass, or what I like to call the perfect license plate cover. Because what's better than simply pressing a button to hide your identity whenever you're being a complete menace on the road? Well, I'll tell you what's better, not going to jail. But that's not gonna stop me from putting this stuff on my license plate for a clickbait thumbnail. And maybe a little crime. And I wanna be clear that I'm not encouraging crime here. In fact, I'll later explain why using this stuff on your license plate can actually increase your chances of getting caught in almost any criminal situation. And besides, this PDLC film, better known as Polymer Dispersed Liquid Crystal, has some good uses beyond just crime. It's commonly used in windows for privacy, and with the added benefit of blocking UV light, it could save you some costs on air conditioning. That is, if you first spend thousands on installing this stuff on all your windows. It can also be used in my office, where I do business-related things. And check out my garage with smart glass, filled with cool and expensive cars. But what interests me more than all it can be used for is how it actually works. So, after years of occasionally looking up the science behind smart glass, I became an expert in the field. You probably understand the basics. When it's on, it's transparent, and when you turn it off, it goes opaque. Something called liquid crystals, which are embedded in the film, makes this all possible. Now, a liquid crystal isn't exactly a substance in itself. Instead, it's the state of matter a substance can be in, which exhibits the properties of both liquids and solids. Now, there's all kinds of substances which fall into the liquid crystal category, and they have a broad range of properties, but we're only concerned with this stuff. PDLC film uses what's called pneumatic liquid crystals, which are made of long polar molecules. Polar meaning the electric charge is unevenly distributed in the molecule, giving one end a negative charge and the other end a positive charge. This polarity allows the molecule to be easily influenced by an electric field. The molecule's long length also plays an important role because it helps keep the crystals aligned with one another. You can think of it like spaghetti. As you can see, each spaghetto is sort of forced to align with its neighboring spaghetto. And don't worry, I tried my best not to waste a single spaghetto, so I did end up eating it afterwards, but for some reason it just didn't taste quite as good as it usually does when it's made for me, so I just threw it away. This elongated shape also gives the crystals some interesting optical properties. These crystals can be represented as a few simple lines. As light passes through these liquid crystals, it will refract at an angle dependent on the orientation of the liquid crystal. However, when light passes through the vertical axis of these liquid crystals, it won't change its angle as it passes through. Now, surprising to absolutely nobody, this stuff is made in China, and they do it by thoroughly mixing this liquid crystal with a polymer, which then solidifies into a thin sheet of plastic. During this process, the liquid crystals get trapped in countless pockets throughout the polymer, hence the name, Polymer Dispersed Liquid Crystal. We can call these pockets of liquid crystals domains. This plastic sheet is then sandwiched in between two layers of indium-10 oxide, which is a transparent and electrically conductive mixture of indium oxide and tin oxide. Now here's the kicker. When there's no current passing through these two layers, each domain is oriented in a random direction as the crystals constantly move around at room temperature. So when light passes through this sheet, each domain will refract and scatter that light in random directions, giving the sheet an opaque look. But once you pass a current through the two conductive layers, each domain will align themselves with the electric field, such that the negatively charged ends of the liquid crystals will point towards the positive side of the film, and vice versa. You just need to give it enough voltage to overcome the thermal energy of the liquid crystals. So in this case, once all of the liquid crystals are aligned, the light passing through them will refract evenly throughout the entire sheet, which makes it transparent. These domains can even be frozen in place, so if I make it transparent, and then make one spot really cold, and I wouldn't recommend putting butane on an electrical device, but it's the only thing I have that can reach low enough temperatures to freeze the crystals. Now if I turn it off, see that spot remains transparent because I froze the domains in place. Pretty cool. So now that we know the basics of switch glass technology, it's time to apply that newfound knowledge to the world of crime. I begin by testing whether the film can be powered by the front 12 volt outlet of my vehicle. And of course, it can. The wires needed to be close to the front seat so I could add a switch that's accessible to the driver. So I figured the front outlets would work best. I was then gonna need to run these wires all the way to the back license plate. And if you're wondering about the front license plate, don't. I ain't doing all that. But here's where I run into my first problem. You can't just simply place this film over your license plate and call it a day, because even when it's turned off, the license plate is still visible. The film needs to be at least an inch away from the plate to effectively block out all the information. So I'm gonna need to make some sort of spacer to achieve this. Now I could easily just use some cardboard and glue to make the license plate frame, but I decided to 3D print one instead. 
And after about an hour of designing and five hours of 3D printing, this is what I get. A failed print, which is just terrific. So after another 5 hours of 3D printing, I finally had a successful print. So I superglued a pre-cut piece of switch glass to it and stuck it on the back license plate. And yeah, I mean, from this angle, it seems alright, but pretty much every other angle tells a much different story. I mean, if this monstrosity on my license plate isn't enough to raise suspicion or identify my vehicle, my bent bumper definitely is. And you may be wondering, why not just use one of your cool and expensive cars for this project? Well, that's a good point. Okay, so I'm out in my uh, garage with one of my cool cars. And it's expensive too, by the way. And yeah, that actually does look a lot better when it's not on a bent bumper facing towards the ground. Now I just need to plug it in and give it some power. But unfortunately, I forgot to bring my keys with me. But would you look at that? I just so happened to have a lock pick in my pocket, AKA a sledgehammer. <laughs> 